Hey guys, this is Mahika Padvidri and I'm here at the CSALB 2014 Homecoming. There's going to be a lot of events taking place today as we wait for the season's very first basketball game. We got fashion shows, obstacle courses, chariot races, and even a lot of free stuff. Let's check it out. like CSULB so far? CSULB, you know, I grew up, I, I lived right across the street for pretty much all my life. You know, I got accepted to UC Berkeley and wow. SLO, and I still decided to come here just because my, my father went here, my father before him went here, you know, it's a tradition within my family. And uh, they, they got a great program here, what's not to love? Exactly. So, this is your third year here, so you must have been to a couple of homecomings. Yes. So, what's, what's exciting about homecoming? Homecoming, honestly, is one of the best times of the year because it's the only time where we have a school-sanctioned event for all of our members of this community to get together. And it's great that we have these competitions here to help revitalize the spirit of our community and help get that school pride going. And I can tell by your shirt that you're in a fraternity. So can you tell us about, about your fraternity, like what being in a fraternity is about? So I'm in Sigma Chi. Being within a fraternity is all about brotherhood. You know, it's about the connections you make. One of my favorite sayings of all times, it's not about the grades you make, but it's about the hands you shake. And fraternity has definitely opened up many doors and they lead to successful futures and they make your college experience 10 times more fun. There's absolutely no reason not to go Greek. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy your homecoming. Thank you. Uh, I'll see you around. Did, did you guys have to practice or like how long did the routine take for you guys? We have a couple so we've kind of just learned them over the course of a few months um, sporadically over some practices but yeah we've kind of known them since August. Yeah. So when do practices take place? We have them three times a week so Tuesday, Thursday, Sundays for three hours each. At night um, we'll be there until about 10 o'clock at night. So do you just like have to be good at dancing or do you have to know like the splits and how do you like yeah, do all yeah. these splits? You have to be able to uh, do turns and leaps pretty well because we compete at nationals and okay. a lot of that's based off being able to perform these tricks. So you pretty much have to have like the standard level of tricks uh, to be on the team and then you'll learn choreography that's based off how well you can do choreography as well. Yeah. And how do you guys like homecoming so far? It's fun. A lot Great. of people are here so we're excited for the game because basketball season is our favorite yeah. and it's a lot more fun. So yeah, we're yeah. It's the best. We <laughs> love homecoming. We're always excited. It's rad. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Love this school. <laughs> Contestants of the chariot race. So, can you guys tell me how long it took you to make this thing? Uh, we spent an entire day at a Home Depot putting this thing together. Like, we spent like six hours at a Home Depot constructing this thing, and that was just the wood. The rest of the the, the tapestry we have running around the outside took us uh, about four or five hours to sit down and paint the whole thing, and that was between three people painting. So, it's been a it's been quite an experience getting getting this thing built. It's it's been good. So, how do you get into this contest like I don't even know like if I wanted to be in the chariot race next year what would I have to do um, I mean we just kind of found out about it through some people in um, the rest of the Parkside Senate that we do and so we just decided to sign up and do it and compete for the Senate and just have a good time okay. and what's your theme obviously it's some sort of Greek you know but what was, what was the meaning behind you know all of this uh, uh, the theme this year is uh, it's it's just a Greek theme, and I think the Red, uh, Red Bull is trying to get with like the Greek system at the school, trying to entice a lot of people to come and play, which is really cool because I'm totally down to compete with all the fraternities and sororities, whoever's competing. Although we aren't from a fraternity, we're uh, the Parkside Senate, and we just decided to take this on, and we just went with just classic um, 
mythological, uh, even like just anything from uh, the Greek time, you know, we just threw it on the tapestry and we're like, you know, let's just deck this thing out with cool paintings and just make something amazing. Yeah. And you guys are going to win, right? I sure hope sure. so. Sure. <laughs>
And remember, remember what we say? Yeah. Go Beach! president of Long Beach State. Uh, can you please tell me what homecoming means to CSU will be and why it's significant? Well, first of all, this is my, my first homecoming and I've walked around and seen most of the tables and been over to the athletic area. People are so excited to literally be coming home. Some of these folks have traveled from across the country to come back to their alma mater. And of course, there's bunches of students here and I hope they're rubbing shoulders with alums. So I think it means you know, reconnecting with old friends, making new friends, and remembering, you know, the value of the degree that you got here from the from, uh, on the part of the alums. So Long Beach State is a great school. It seems like it's we're always moving forward with things. So what should we expect for the upcoming year to happen? Well, I think uh, this year uh, we should expect that we'll uh, hire 60 new faculty that'll be full full time tenure track. We'll be moving. Uh, across the board to get more full-time faculty so that students can find faculty at office hours and that their programs can keep being improved. I think you're going to see some um, more physical improvements across the beach in classrooms, uh, more, more technology for students uh, because of the student excellence fee, more advisors, um, and the new e-advising system that, you know, it's a little hard to get used to at first, probably not for our students, but, you know, for the old guys like me. Uh, but that's going to make a huge difference uh, in everybody's experience. Yeah. So, have you had time to go around and see the different events and booths yet? I've seen uh, I've seen a bunch of them. Uh, I I was on my way to see the chariot when I got pulled over uh, to the athletics because and they wanted me to go in the the hospitality room in the pyramid has been completely redone with support from alums um, from the sigma sigma pi. Um, chapter, a fraternity a alumni chapter there, and it looks terrific. If you get a chance to go in there, especially if you've, if you've seen the old Euclea room, go look at the new Euclea room. It's, it's such a classy room that, um, that highlights all of our 19 sports, has lots of seating. It'll be a great place for students to gather, the athletes to watch tape, and for our donors and supporters to go and be entertained. So I know you have probably a lot of things to do so I'll just have yeah. one more question for yeah, you. Sure. So in all this whole homecoming event I know it's it took a long time to do it's a lot the students did it so how much time and planning did this take? Um, who was in charge of it? Was it just the students? You know it's a combination uh, and I uh, and again this remember this is my first one but what I see is that it's a combination of staff like from student services from the academic divisions that they have uh, showcasing their programs, uh, uh, various groups like the presidential ambassadors are there. So, you know, my sense is that each area, uh, that, that the entirety of it is, is a faculty, staff, and student production. I don't really know who's in charge of the whole thing. I can just say for sure, not me. <laughs> I, just came, I just came to enjoy it, and I really am enjoying it. What's yeah. your favorite event so far? Well, I think it was really fun. The, um, the health and kinesiology people, um, leisure studies, they created a little, a really a little garden that was people could sit and completely de-stress. So I thought that was my current favorite, just because it was so creative to uh, to find it. You know, with all this noise and excitement, you could sit there and be surrounded by greenery and just uh, just be relaxed and calm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're very welcome. And there's more to come, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. Enjoy the day. Thank okay. you. You too.
Well, we're from Grupo Folklorico Mexica de CSULB, and we're basically a club that practices on Fridays from 5 to 8 or 5 to 9 sometimes. Um, but yeah, basically we're just a club dancing. It's a um, cultural dance that we do, so that's basically what it is. What's the cultural dance called? Um, well, different dances come from different regions, so like there's different states in Mexico and that's each region has its own dance, so that's why we're dressed one way and they're dressed another way because they're two different regions. Yeah. Okay. So do your costumes, do they mean anything? Is there some sort of significance behind it? They represent the country it's from. So this one is from Hidalgo, so we're gonna be a, we're gonna be doing an Hidalgo dance. So this is why our dress is like this, and that's why their dress is different because they're gonna represent another country in Mexico. Okay, and then your uh, your kind of dance was our state is from Jalisco. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So do you guys um, do you guys go in like competitions or like talent shows, or do you guys just go in school and do your thing just for fun? Talent shows and competitions, and we put on shows. Um, for the school too. Just anywhere that they call us, we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> so if like I wanted to join your group, um, how could I do that? Do I have to be a part of some sort of Mexican no, thing? No. Or can you just, just anyone, anyone you just can come show up to practice and just do your best and just come with great enthusiasm and ready to dance basically. And will you guys teach me the dances? Or yeah, yeah. Are, have you guys been doing this for a really long time? No, no honestly, no. this is like some of our first times even dancing this. Okay. But some people have been dancing for years and they just like want to keep dancing and they decided to form a group at school. So basically anybody can join. Wow, that's and great. are you guys in? You guys have a booth I see over here. So we are a student chapter for the Society of Automotive Engineers, which is an international organization. Um, we uh, designed, build, and test two different types of race cars. We have our Baja off-roading vehicle, as well as a formula-style vehicle, which you can see up there. Okay. So if I wanted to be in this group, how could I join? Um, you would have to be a student at Cal State Long Beach, and you would have to be, we're just willing to help out. No other requirements. Okay, and I see this really cool machinery behind you. Can you explain what this is? Uh, yeah, so this is a, um, an off-roading vehicle that was completely designed um, and built by students. Everything except the uh, shocks and engine were built by students and designed on a computer and tested, simulated on a computer and tested in the real world. And it goes to competitions um, every year against other schools to see who is the best engineer. Have you, have you guys like got went through any like competitions with this one yet? Yeah, this, or? this car is actually one of our older vehicles from okay. about 2008, 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. and it went to a couple competitions up in Washington and Wisconsin, and this actually placed in the top ten in suspension design at that competition. That's really cool. I'm class of '72 proud alumni of Cal State Long Beach and um, I, this isn't the only time I come. I don't come just for homecoming. I probably come to my old school about four or five times a year. Why is CSULB the best school to go to compared to all the other schools? Why did you love being here? Why do you keep coming back? It was uh, always a wonderful place to be and uh, for example just to give you one example, at UCLA, they put on a huge carnival uh, every year at springtime called Mardi Gras. When I was here, and up until 1972, we here at Cal State Long Beach put on a spring festival called 49er Days. And you can go back in the history of the 49er newspaper and you'll see years and years of coverage of 49er Days, which was a three-day event. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Here's one of the things. I'm only giving one of many things okay. that makes this school special. At UCLA, Mardi Gras was write a check to a carnival company 
and bring the professional carnival company on campus. We didn't do that. The students at this school made 49er Days happen. They built a town. They built a western town. A complete replica of a western town by themselves. The fraternities, the sororities, the clubs, the associated students, some of the alumni chipped in and they built a town in 24 hours. Didn't write no check to some professional carnival company. We did it ourselves. So that's one of the things I love. So I'm sitting in an ambulance with some EMT students here. Can you guys tell me um, how long have you been in this program? Uh, we've been in this program for about nine weeks so far. We started in about August, and then so now I mean we're just on our lunch break right now. So <laughs> okay. I mean we're learning some new stuff, so it's it's a good experience. And so do you do you like um, mentor them or do you train them? Um, I'm here just for the homecoming event. We're a contracted provider with uh, the school here, so we we offer different ride-alongs for the EMT students, and I'm actually here just to you know, kind of give a tour of the ambulance, get them more comfortable with it, give them any tips I can think of. Uh, any questions they had, I try to answer them to my best knowledge and it seems to be working out so far. That's cool. Um, can you give us a little tour of the ambulance? Like just from where you're sitting, like what, what is this little station over here? And, yeah, you know? that's no problem. I mean, this is the main workstation here. This is kind of just for paperwork and then any kind of supplies you want on like off on your like person make them quick so you can use them so we typically we have a lot of IV stuff here uh, we have all our switches here for lights any kind of uh, suction unit if we want to use our uh, inverter for power so we can plug different electronics in typically like a ventilator uh, cardiac monitor pumps for IVs anything like that that we may use uh, we have our oxygen plugins here so typically there's a regulator there you can see one next to his head there that one they do look just like that, put them over here, plug a patient in, helps them out. And this, of course, is our gurney we load people up on that typically aren't feeling too hot. But, uh, yeah, and this, uh, this spot right here is labeled CPR bench. Usually this is the person doing CPR, and then the other spots are for if you're doing any kind of other life-saving techniques, if you're starting lines, if you're giving meds, things like that. Thank you so much for your time, guys. are in Tridel, yeah, so I know unless you're in the Greek life, people don't really know about it, so can you just like say why Greek life is important, like why you guys, what's it about, what do you guys do? Well, our philanthropy is uh, St. Jude's, so we do a lot of uh, like events to fundraise to help and donate money to them. Yeah, actually as a national chapter, um, our newest goal is 60 million in 10 years. So we're known yeah. for raising the most for our philanthropy out of like all the chapters nationwide. Oh, okay. And um, but like another thing is building relationships and stuff like sisterhood and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff. And then like also connections for the future because like a lot of Greek people like at, right after graduation have a job lined up because of alum and like other girls in the sorority and stuff. And then um, so it just kind of prepares you for life in a way. Because then you you know how to like interact with others. You know how to like if you have a position, you know how to maybe run a small business. And, like, you have like that lifelong bond, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. right? Like yeah. friends after college. And yeah. Everything. Tell us why we should be in the Greek life system. Well, first of all, Greek life is like it's pretty much everyone who you know and who you have fun with all in one big club member. Is something. It's, Just imagine it's, like your closest friends in one organization together and together we do philanthropies, we do just social events and anything. Honestly, everyone's welcome. You always find a right house for you, no matter what. It's all about coming together as a as a group. You know, I mean we have a great time together. We all we all pretty much we have philanthropies. We try to we try to make a fun time for the whole community. We raise money. We're, I mean, it's not all about partying. We have a good time and we do it for a good cause. So that's about it.
can you tell us something about your organization? Like, what is it? Uh, for the most part, we're part of the uh, Student Life and Development Club. Uh, we're the Kindle Club on campus. Or, no, sorry. Yeah, Club Sports and Recreation. So, um, we're a newly formed club, and we're dedicated towards practicing Japanese martial art of sword fencing. Mm -hmm. So, do you guys go to competitions? Um, even though we're relatively young, we did have one competition we went to last spring. It was an intercollege tournament at UCLA. And so we took five of my members there. They were all students here. And uh, about three of them actually in the individuals um, got a placement. One person who was in beginner got second place. And the other who was in black belt degrees got uh, third place. So if I wanted to join your organization, would I already have to know this form? Or will you guys like teach me? Uh, for the most part, you know, even though none of us are actually teachers yet, we don't, haven't gotten a, sen a sensei or instructor, um, we still can teach you basic fundamentals. So, no experience is necessary. Anyone can jump in and start learning. So, how long, do you, how long have you been doing this? I started my freshman year entering school, and I've been doing it for about three years. Okay, so, like, you can start in college. This isn't something that you have to do. You don't, yeah, you don't have to like start, little... like, you know, five years old, swinging a little yeah. miniature version of the, a sword or something like that. No. <laughs> Yeah, you know, even at an adult age, you can sort of still get into it, and as long as you know you're serious about it, um, you know, it can take you really far because it's really a lifelong adventure. Are you going to be a future CSU OB student? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun. Hope to see you guys next year at Homecoming. This is Mihika Pedvidri. Go Beach!